Will I make it to heaven if I suffer wrongly? I'd like to look at that for a moment, but before I do, I want to remind you that this evening we meet for prayer at 7.30. We have prayer every Tuesday morning at 10 and every Wednesday, 7.30. Do join us this evening as we seek God's face together. Secondly, this Saturday, we will no longer be allowed to meet as a church. Uh, the number last week was that, that was allowed was 250, and we uh, were... Um, together, uh, just celebrating God's goodness, uh, all of us who were able to come. Um, we just were so happy to be as one group. Uh, the last time we had that was last year in March, March 8th, I think it was, the Sunday of March 8th. So it took one year for us to come together as a church, but um, Premier Lego made an announcement, and now we are down to 25 people. So we will have two gatherings, and you need to register, uh, that, which is pre-registration. And you need to do that today before uh, Friday morning. So please remember to register, and you need to do that individually. There's the 10 o'clock gathering, and then there's the 11.30 gathering. And if both gatherings are full, please uh, add your name to the waiting list. There's always someone who cancels out at the last minute and is unable to come. So we'll just call you. And um, if you're available, you can come and join us on Saturday. Let's make it a point to come. There will be no Zoom gathering. Um, please make it a point to come this coming Saturday, 10 o'clock or 11.30. Youth are still meeting in person. That's this coming Friday at church. Uh, home groups, uh, men's group. The uh, women are going to be meeting also on the last Friday of April. And uh, you'll be continuing with the book of Exodus. And that too is on Zoom. All of this continues on Zoom. And please do remember, those of you who are giving, do remember the missionaries as they need our support both in prayer and our finances at this particular time. You could just imagine the discouragement that is going on all over the world with the third wave in some places, the fourth wave, with the variants, with the numbers just going through the roof. The governments do not know what they're doing um, what to, or, or rather what they need to do. You can imagine how discouraged they are. Only the gospel of Jesus Christ brings hope. Only the gospel sets people free. Only the gospel gives us buoyancy in spirit so that we can endure this and weather this. The church will not be destroyed because of COVID-19. Churches, church buildings may, may close and, and, and there will be people who will be disbanded, but the church of Jesus Christ will triumph. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. We have nothing to fear. So let's not be discouraged. And those of you who can join us this Saturday, join us. Otherwise, the message will be uploaded um, and, and uh, you'll hear it as of Sunday. It will be available on the different platforms so that you can follow the message as well. So, will anyone make it to heaven because they suffer? Let's imagine someone is wrongly accused of a crime and sent on death row. He spends years in prison waiting to be released, waiting for some justice to come his way. And while he's in prison, he gets cancer. And slowly his body is racked with pain and, and he, doesn't, he never sees his loved ones. He's accused of a crime that he's never committed. And then finally he's brought to execution and he's executed. He lives in a state where a crime of, his, uh, of that nature needs to be punished with the death penalty and he is executed wrongfully. Now can he stand before God one day and say these words, because I've been wrongly um, uh, mistreated, I've suffered wrongly throughout my life, I deserve heaven. Can he? Well, if he could, then God should let injustice happen to everyone. He should have never sent his son. He should have just let pain fill this world. You see, if suffering could get us into the heaven, then that's what God should have done and God should be doing. But God doesn't do that. Recently, someone I know quite well passed away after contracting COVID-19. 
And someone commented on his death saying, well, at least now he'll get heaven because he suffered. He suffered wrongfully, according to this person, and he now deserves heaven. Really. Again, if that's the case, God should have everyone die from COVID-19. Because then God would bring everybody to heaven. Did Jesus say to the person on the left of him, or the other criminal, let's say left or right, we don't know which position, there were two criminals, did he say to both of them, you will be with me in paradise because you're suffering. You're on the cross. No, he didn't. He only said it to one, not to both. Why is that? Because whatever suffering comes our way, it is never, never uh, given to us according to what our sins deserve. Psalm 103 says that very specifically. Psalm 103 and verse 10 says that he does not treat us as our sins deserve. So you take the person who has suffered the most. Take anyone you can think of. Anyone who is sick with a disease in their body. Anyone. And take that person and think for a moment. Will that suffering qualify him or her for heaven? Most people think yes. We see those images of people suffering in faraway lands. We say, well, that person must go to heaven. If he suffers this way, that person is going to go to heaven. But there's no indication of that in God's word. If that were the case, God should send that kind of suffering all over this globe, all over the planet. Now someone may ask, well, then why does God allow that suffering to happen in some parts of this world? I'm not saying that suffering does not have its benefits. A person who suffers realizes the futility of life. A person who suffers has a head start in understanding that he is someone who is undeserving of God's goodness. That's what suffering should do to us. It should bring us to our knees. It should cause us to be grateful to him. The right response from a suffering person is, is we, we see it in Job when he said, God has given, God has taken, blessed be the name of the Lord. God has every right to bring suffering into our lives because our sins are gargantuan. We don't see that. We see ourselves as good people, as deserving life, as deserving all the good things from heaven. We don't understand. It is God who's good. Not We're not good at all. Where are we good? What did we do to deserve life? What did we... What do we do to deserve all the blessings we have in life? So if God were to take away these blessings and cause us to suffer, right? He's not doing anything unrighteous. He is just. People say, I wish God were more fair. You don't want God to be fair. If God were fair, would, be, would be fair, we would all end up in hell. That's not what we want. We want God's mercy, and God is merciful. Now, suffering. Will suffering, intense suffering, will that suffice to bring us to heaven? Well, if that were the case, then why send Jesus? Right? Some people say, well, they sent Jesus to show us that if we suffer, we're going to end up in heaven just like Jesus did. That is not true. Again, all the suffering we have in this world, first of all, is not commensurate to the sin that we've committed. We have sinned against the infinitely holy God. And our sin is such that if we would suffer a thousand times more than what we're suffering now, it would still be insufficient. Look at what Psalm 49 verse 7 and 8 say. Truly no man can ransom Another. Now let's imagine, for example, someone who suffers and suffers and says, I will give my life, my suffering, for someone else, my son, so that he does not go to hell, so that he will make it to heaven. He can't. Truly, no man can ransom another or give to God the price of his life. You can't, you can't ransom yourself because how do you ransom yourself? You're, you're a sinner. You're condemned. And God's word says very clearly... In Psalm 7, verse 11, that God's anger is real and is manifest. God is angry every single day. Sin is real in our lives, 
and God's anger is what we deserve for our sin. And anyone who says otherwise is not reading God's word correctly and is living an illusion. Anyone who feels that his suffering will qualify him for heaven is again living a lie. Truly no man can ransom another or give to God the price of his life. For the ransom of their life is costly and never will suffice that he should live forever and never see the pit. Every single human being is worthy of one thing, hell. That's what God's word says. No one is worthy of heaven. No one except one. Jesus, the only man who pleased the Father, the only one that God said of, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. He's the only one that obeyed the Father perfectly. And he's the only one who suffered wrongfully. No one else. No one can redeem or ransom the life of another. Not Mary, not the angels, no one. Only one suffered wrongfully. Only one deserves heaven. Only one can say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Only one and no one else. Because if suffering could bring us into heaven, then God should pour it in abundance on all of us. And he doesn't. His loving kindness is all around us. Look at the air we breathe. Look at the sun that shines. Look at the rain that falls. Look at the vegetation that is green. Look at your hearts that beat. The many gifts that you have. God is merciful. God is kind. God is gracious. Every single day, He does not treat us as our sins deserve. He only treated one person as our sins deserve. He treated His Son that way. He crushed Him. Not me, not you. Why would He do that? And yet here we are fooling ourselves into thinking that we somehow could earn heaven because of our suffering. And we go around saying, oh my goodness, look how much he is suffering. He's going to go to heaven. And we, and we fool ourselves into thinking that way. That's a lie. No one deserves heaven. Look at Revelation chapter 5. John sees heaven. He sees the angels. And then there's a cry. Who is worthy? Who is worthy? Who deserves heaven? Heaven. Who? And a search was made in heaven. No one. All those who are now in heaven, along with the angels, no one. A search was made in, on earth. Look at the babies. Look at those who are suffering atrociously right now. Someone who's on death row, wrongfully accused. No one. Look at some wonderful mother. No one. And then below the earth, no one. And it says John wept because no one was found worthy but one. Jesus Christ, he alone is worthy. And yet he was treated as though he was the worst sinner on the face of the earth. You see, if suffering could bring us into heaven, God would have never sent his son. He would have poured all the suffering he could which, according to our sins, on this world, all of it, to the, to the, exactly to what we deserve, and we would have been crushed. There would have been no way for any of us to say, save ourselves. Nothing. But God doesn't do that. He showers us with loving kindness every single day. He gives us good things that we don't deserve. We should be grateful. We should never, ever complain about anything. We shouldn't be complaining about COVID-19. We shouldn't. We should be saying, the Lord has given. We were able to hug each other. We were able to give handshakes. We were able to embrace our loved ones. We were able to go out and be together. The Lord has taken it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That should be our response. Not why, not when, not I deserve better. We should stop all of that and just ask the Lord for grace to endure this period. And when he sees it fit, 
he will stop it and not before and in the meanwhile we are to repent humble ourselves before him because he's not treating us as our sins deserve we are not able through our suffering to earn heaven only the suffering of jesus christ will make us fit for heaven that's why the thief on the cross believed that he was deserving of what he was getting which is the crucifixion and believed that jesus is the true king and that jesus was going to resurrect and then he asks remember me when you enter your kingdom and jesus turned to him and said you will be with me in paradise why did he say well first you've got to suffer first you've got to do good works first you've got to atone for your sin no because he believed in christ and who he was and he believed that he himself was undeserving and no matter how much pain he was going through on that cross that was not the reason why he was going into heaven he was going into heaven for one reason and one reason alone because christ was suffering for him christ was suffering wrongfully for him and if you don't believe that you will perish but if you believe in that truth then you will say i deserve hell but for christ's sake i am going to heaven i believe it see you this evening at prayer the lord bless you